I think most people know that my views on him, and the fact that I think that he hasn't given the defence. <laughs> God's sake! What's that? It's not a fire alarm, is it? Welcome back to the Blivview. A few of you have asked for a retained list, so we're going to go for each player, me and Dan Bardella. Welcome, Dan. Hello. And we're going to try and digest everything and not let our hearts pour out too much about the atrocities that is the Aston Villa team. So we're going to start with goalkeepers and defenders today. So, Dan, Brad Guza, and I don't want him to stay. Do you want him to stay? I don't think really anyone wants him to stay. I think we covered him quite well in our... Uh... Video cast yesterday, but he's finished because he makes the defence nervy. He's nervy. He makes the fans anxious as well. So there's just there's no benefit to him being in the being on the pitch. And big championship strikers are gonna are gonna target him next season. If you've got a weak goalkeeper, they will be exposed in the championship. So I've said in on occasions this season that that I'm better than Brad Gers. And and to be honest, some of the games he's played in, I stand by that because he has been dreadful. So he'd be one of the first ones out the door without a doubt. I'm unsure about Mark, but I'm undecided whether to keep him or not. What do you think about him? Um, I think as a, as a backup, he's he's perfectly adequate. I mean, whether he himself would think, I want to be backup a championship team is, is probably a different kettle of fish. I think after he's had a taste of being number one in the Premier League, or be it briefly, I, I don't think he would want to come back next season and be a number two but I don't think he's probably good enough to be a number one I think as a backup though to the next one we're looking at Jed Steer he wouldn't be a bad option because Jed Steer has had a season out on loan at Huddersfield Town and he's been quite impressive for them ideally if we had all the money in the world or even if we had a decent transfer budget I'd like a new keeper but Jed Steer perhaps does deserve a chance because he's actually been here for three or four years now and not really ever had go in the team and like we were saying yesterday about left backs we have terrible goalkeepers if a new man's coming in I think usually they, they want to put their own stamp on the squad and a good place to start is by bringing in your own goalkeeper I think that's what David O'Leary did when he first came in he brought Thomas Sorensen with him I think it would be a good place to start to have a new goalkeeper start afresh we're going to move on to the defence now and arguably our signing of the summer Jordan Amarvi I would love Amarvi to stay but He's probably too good for the championship. I mean, if he hadn't got injured, I'd say there's a, there's absolutely no way that, that he would be staying. Someone would have circled above him and someone would be taking him off us. But I think because of his injury, it perhaps gives us a little bit of time in that maybe people want to see him prove his fitness before they pay, pay money for him. I mean, letting him go on, on loan, I don't see how that's any good for us, even if we do get a decent fee. I mean, he's a very, very good left-back and the kind of player that would probably tear the championship up. And... I wrote an article about him for the Birmingham Mail the other day, and I think he, he kind of owes us. I mean, the supporters have been very good with him. He's been very interactive with the supporters on social media. and Basically, he's probably only played about seven or eight games for us. So if he could just give us a season to try and get back up to the championship, if he could just give us a season to try and get back up to the championship, to try and get back up to the championship, then that would be great. But I, I, I don't know what you think, but I think he is potentially one of our top three players next season if he stays. Get us back up to the championship, did you say? Yep, I meant Premier League. <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. I think that Jordan Amarvi is the, the best player that we have got in that squad. And arguably, he filled that void that we have had at left-back for so many years. So, next left-back is Ali Sissoko. Came back from Porto in our era of need, and he really was awful. But to me, there's been rumours of him going to be sick task this summer, and I'd quite happily li- like to see him move on. Uh, first off, I think he probably benefited from simply not being Kieran Richardson when, when he first came back. I think fans probably gave him a bit of leeway because that, I actually quite like him because he doesn't pretend to be anything that he isn't. He isn't very good going forward. He's not very good on the ball, but he's reasonably solid. Def- I'm mean, using the word solid loosely. Oh. He's, he's reasonably solid at the back. He, he, he keeps it safe, but his distribution is awful. And I think maybe even in, in the championship, he would probably get ripped to shreds by uh, just a pacey winger or a difficult winger. He's probably on decent wage as well, and he's probably, for some reason, he is a a saleable asset. Someone someone will will come in for him. So if we've got Amarvi, and we'll probably go on to Joe Bennett in a minute, if we've got Amarvi and we've got got Bennett, then really there there is no need for Sissoko, especially if we can get some money for him. 
Yeah, I agree. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we'll get much for him, but I'd rather get him off the wage bill than keep him around. Because there's surely a reason why Sevilla didn't want him. There's surely a reason why Valencia didn't want him. And there's surely a reason why Liverpool didn't keep hold of him. And there's surely a reason that Porto didn't activate his permanent sign-on fee in January instead of letting him come back to us. One of the other defensive players, the one that we saw rise towards the back end of last season, was Kevin Toner. I think he's got a special future at the club, but... I think the issue is we can't pair him with somebody like Kieran Clark, for example, next year because he needs somebody that's more of a solid figure. I think he'll be, be good as a as a fourth choice centre back. You can play left back as well, can't he? He's, de- he's definitely got a future, and he, he did well when he came. And I mean, I thought Eric Black playing a young centre back in his second Premier League start at left wing back against Newcastle was a horrific decision. But I don't want him to get started on Eric Black again. So, moving on to the centre-half position, we're going to start with Kieran Clark. What do you make of the situation with him? And do you reckon he will go this summer? There's rumours of him going to Sunderland, rumours of him going to West Brom. Again, he's not, he's not, not a world-beater. He's, he's never going to be a world-beater, but he, he's reasonably solid. He's got, he's got a good attitude. And I think the season before the one just gone, when him and Okoro were together and he had to take on a leadership role, I thought he was very good. It was definitely the best spell he's had in a Villa shirt. And for me, he's one of the few that I... I would keep that have been around this season. Certainly one of the few defenders I would, I would keep. Julian Lescott. I'd personally drive him to wherever he wants to go this summer. If he wants to go to Marseille or wherever, just to go and sit on the beach, I'll take him there as long as he stays there. The same as if he wants to go to America, I'll make sure I pay for that plane ticket. We'll crowdfund it. We'll do something to get him over to America. I really don't like him and I really do hope he does not stay. I don't think he'll let you do the driving. <laughs> he, 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 he likes his cars. I think his relationship with the fans never really began. So you can't to say his relationship with the fans is over would be a bit, a bit difficult to say because he, he never began. They never they never took to him. His performances have been garbage from day one. His attitude's been pretty rank from day one. And it looks like his, his legs have gone. I mean, he used to have a, a slight bit of pace back in the day when he was at Everton and City, but that's completely disappeared now. I mean, he's just been a disaster. I find it ridiculous when he said he's a fan. I don't believe that for one minute, and I really do hope he does leave the club. So, Mick Richards, I honestly thought last summer when he came in, he would be our sign of the summer, he'd be an excellent player, he'd be the captain, he'd be the leader, and he'd carry us up the league. Been the exact opposite. First off, I'd say he's definitely not a centre-back. He cannot play a centre-back. <laughs> he has not oh. got the, le- the legs for it. His positional sense is appalling some of the times he might as well be sitting in the stands his positioning is so bad uh, I think he's got the right I'm just going to sound a bit stupid saying this but I, I kind of like his character because I, I actually did get the impression that he, he did care I mean his performances weren't always great but he always fronted up you saw him when we were in the FA Cup against was it Wickham and he was having to talk to the fans I always felt like he was an, an honest guy I mean I think booing him was perhaps a bit harsh because I did feel that he always gave his best, but he's probably getting paid too much to be in the championship. And and again, it comes down to egos, and I don't think his ego would allow him to play in the championship. So moving on now, Jose Corre, the man himself, he reckons he's too big for the championship. And to me, that sort of suggests a huge ego. So bin him? I like him as a player and when we signed him I was pretty excited about him I don't, probably a lot of fans saw the same YouTube video of him playing against Chelsea yeah. in the Champions League that I saw he yeah, like yeah. a real like, like, like Bereza in the back yeah. line he was spraying the ball around but he's just been he's been injured too much and to be fair to him in, in a sense like when you've got Richards and Lescott playing ahead of you everywhere that must be pretty demoralising because they were awful and he's sitting on the bench and it, he, he must be heartbroken watching that I did always like him, but his attitude seriously has to be questioned now. I mean, refusing to sit on the bench and then refusing to be involved again for the rest of the season. It's poor and it's disrespectful to the fans, and the fans have, again, always been very good to him. So it just He's probably he's probably finished, isn't he? I'm not sure how many years he's got left on his contract, one or two. He's a solid player. I think he can be a solid player alongside the right person. So anyone in that bottom half of the table, I think he'd be a good addition for them. Him and Clark look good together when they played together the season before last, so... Like you say, there, there, there is a player there, but unfortunately, because of injuries, we haven't seen it. So, Alan Hutton, another Bye. one. <laughs> you don't like Alan Hutton, man. <laughs> not, not the biggest fan of him, to be fair. <laughs> I agree. He always gives it all, but it's sort of like that one kid in the school team that got in the team, or like the Sunday team, because his dad was the manager, 
he gave his all, but actually he's the worst player on the pitch. <laughs> There's no hiding it. I mean, we're talking about, I talked about Richards' positional sense. The amount of times <laughs> that you see an attack building down the left-hand side and you look for where Button is and he's still tracking back from the attack. He's not good enough. I mean, yeah. to be fair to be fair to him, we do use him like he's Hector Bellerin or, or Kyle <laughs> Walker. We train him like he's this marauding wing back and this big attacking outlet, and he, he can't he can't do it. And that is that isn't his fault. And at least he does carry and he does try. But I was just got sick of watching him. So next one is Landra Bakuna, Mr. Champions League. Get rid of him. Yeah. I, I'm not kidding, but. He wouldn't be able to play in the Champions League if they created the Champions League for him because he's awful, absolutely goddamn awful. What position does he even want to play? I don't know. His positional sense is woeful. He can't take a free kick to save his life. He's certainly not Neymar or Ronaldo. I just don't get him. And to come out and say that he can play for PSV or Ajax, it's like me coming out and saying I can go and play for PSV or Ajax. Well, you probably, if he thinks he can, then there's definitely hope for us all. I actually used to quite. I used to think he was all right like last season. I think when he came in at right, not last season, the season before when he came in at right back and we went and the cup, the cup and that's the FA Cup final. He was semi decent under Sherwood, and I've always thought he was a, a decent squad player just by virtue that he can play in a few positions. But last season he was just horrific. That display against Liverpool when we lost six 0 was the worst individual performance from a Villa player I think I've I've ever seen. His touch was horrendous. He was strutting around like he was on a catwalk. He, he barely like broke into a into a jog. He was he was just horrendous, and he's not recovered from from really the fans booing him. He's got worse as the season's gone on. I mean, I never really agree with fans booing their own players, but to be honest, I couldn't have any complaints or argue with anyone about the treatment he got towards the end of the season. I mean that. That pass he did against Southampton. Oh, woeful. Absolutely woeful. I've yeah. never seen anything like what, it. What was he thinking? He's just... If he thinks he's going to play Champions League football, then he must have the best agent going. Tinted because glasses. Tinted rose glasses. It's not happening. It's no definitely chance. not happening. No chance. More chance of knitting fog. Nathan Baker. We've touched on him. I've always um denied over him when he's been a Villa player. So, I think he should stay and fight it out for a first-team place. There's no point in going elsewhere. I've always quite liked... Baker, I think there was Lambert's second season. I thought he was had a bad season. But Lambert's first season, I thought he was pretty good. And then, again, the, in Lambert's last season, I thought, again, he was, he was quite good. Off. Yeah, he was showing signs that he was learning and he was understanding. But the problem with Baker is he just can't stay fit. I mean, I think it's just because of the way he plays. His body's on the line all the time. He just cannot stay, stay fit. Like I said earlier, I think, would we want Baker and Clark? next season. I hate to sort of say it, but we've got more chance of shifting Clark than we have Baker. Yeah, and I think, for, again, like I said earlier, I think the Championship would suit, well, it obviously does suit Baker because he's done well, at, done well at Bristol City and got good reviews there. But I, I just, I don't know. I'd keep I'd keep Baker, definitely, whether he's a, a one, one or two centre-back or whether he's number three or four, that, I, I don't know. Joe Bennett, I think he should stay. But this week, he sort of publicly come out and said that he'd be really happy if he could go and join Sheffield Wednesday. I think he's probably just keeping his options open in case the new manager, Di Matteo, d- doesn't want him. I always felt a bit sorry for Bennett when he when he was in the came to the team under Lambert because he, he did struggle to adapt to Premier League life to begin with. But I always kind of respected him because he, he never hid, and although he defensively he wasn't the best, he, he never he never played it safe. He, he tried to play football, and at the time. That was a, I thought that was a brave thing to do. He was getting a lot of stick from the fans, but he never he never hid. He, he still tried to play. Sometimes a bit too much. Players were out of trouble, but like I'm he's got he's got a decent delivery, and I think at Championship level he will be a very good player. I think much depends on whether Amavi stays because if Amavi goes, he, he will he would be the first choice left back for me. But if Amavi stays, would he settle for being back up? And especially when he's done well at Sheffield Wednesday and maybe they want him. I, I don't think he would. So his future is probably very much up in the air. I agree with that. Uh, every fan that he's played under, have, they've raved about him. They raved about him at Brighton last season and they have done at Sheffield Wednesday this season. So there's definitely a player inside there, but I don't think he's Premier League quality yet. We don't know. So we've got to see what he can do. But I think that one is up in the air, as you say. So Dan, thank you for joining me to go over the goalkeepers and defenders. 
We'll be back in a few days' time to run over the midfielders and forwards. Drop us a like below on the video. Also, comment below. And remember to subscribe to us. It is free to subscribe. And also, follow us on Twitter at the Villa View underscore. And go over to our Facebook to drop us a cheeky like. You can also enter our competition there for Art of Football. That's the Villa View, though, for this week. Remember to catch us next time for all the forwards and midfielders. You know, he would be probably the last person I would like to see leave. I don't I don't rate him. I don't see the big fuss over. Mr. Invisible. I hate him. I've got such a spite against that man. Because if he can score 20 plus goals in a league, that league is not very good.